fell one time, one time, one time then I fell again. again, again. I fell a third time, third time can't third get time. away from the sin. Sin, sin. I keep falling, falling, then I come back to you, crawling, asking forgive me now, I'm balling, knowing that I let you down, appalling. I don't wanna jeopardize my calling. When I hear your voice no more, I'm halting. I just wanna live in the world you're evolving. I am so imperfect, I'm getting involved in these flesh tied friends, the blind consultant. Pulling me away from the world, I'm revolting. Asking for forgiveness is probably insulting. But you keep taking me back and you're vaulting. Give me chances, chances, chances. You keep giving me chances, chances, chances. You give me chances, chances. Just keep giving me chance. As you all know, the Elevation Podcast is about bringing value um, and, and, and uplifting people and uplifting our lives in any way I possibly can. Um, I bring to you uh, guests and different people that will be inspiring to you and inspirational to you and empowering to you. Today, I have a really special guest, one that um, I just had an opportunity to meet, but she's an amazing person. Her name is Lori Grant. She's uh, she's published three children's book, uh, three mm, three children <laughs> three children's books. She uses adorable children's stories to convey important values to readers of all ages. Lori has been a blogger since 2016. Her writing is considered to be inspirational, using creative personal experiences as analogies to address important life lessons. Authors can learn about steps to self-publication as well as some of the highs and lows of the process. This is such a really good opportunity for us to um, be inspired by someone and learn from someone and, and see the process of things. And so I'm really excited about having her here. Her name is Lori Grant, and we're going to talk to her right after this. This is the Elevation Podcast. My name is Sean Riff Raff. Let's go. King, 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 King. King. Royalty, stand up, brand up, fam up, hand out, no way, hands up, no what. Name that, it's mine, claim that, it's time, message, we shine, above all, the decline, the darkness cannot last, the shadow of my past, before I gain knowledge of heritage, I have the bloodline that I share, most powerful out here, the mover of mountains, it's who I am talent, the richest among us, it's who I'm, the sun up, from sundown, the sun up, that's how I, the come up, position, it's just mine, the favor, in due time, can't have it, man, you lying, the powerless, you trying, enemy, beneath me, it's nothing, to teach me, the people receive me Cause my God complete me And my God does keep me And my God they free me And my God redeem me And my God believe me I am the king, the man crown me I am winning my position God is giving God, sending God to the king Hey Lori, thanks so much for coming on I appreciate you being here Hey, thanks. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. It's so it was so interesting to learn about you. Um and it's it's so interesting to talk to you. Um because you know, there are interestingly enough, you know, on on whatever side of the world you on, you find so many similarities between everyone's story, which is yeah. which is super cool. Um I wanna talk first, before we, you know, really dive deep, I wanna talk first. I always like to to just know about a person and um from them, you know, of of course I've read I've read uh your your bio and all of that stuff, but to to know yeah. more about you just you know, just from you, just where you're from and and you know, how you got to doing um, you know, just just how you got to doing what you're doing and all of that cool stuff. So tell me tell us yeah. a little bit about you. Okay, yeah. So right now I'm living in Sacramento. Um, I've been up here since last May. I uh, kind of gave up my big girl job and okay. in the corporate world and decided that um, I wanted to do something different. I my my kids are raised and they don't they don't need as much from me anymore. So um, I decided I would take a nonprofit job. So I took a nonprofit job. Uh, I do contracts management. I'm a business. I have a degree in business, and so I moved up here to work for nonprofit. 
And so I just, and it's actually, it's actually a media company. So it's very okay. cool. I'm oh, really awesome. loving it. Yeah. I grew up in San Diego. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, when I was reading your, um, when I was reading your bio on your website, um, mm-hmm. it talked a, about the, you know, it talked a lot about how, um, losing your mother, um, yeah. sort of created, uh, sort of where you are and, yeah. and, uh, you know, and, and what you do. So, uh, which, which relates a lot because, you know, my, you know, my, my grandmother passed and I watched, you know, my yeah. mom who, who cared for her, um, you know, lose, lose her, um, to Alzheimer's. Um, tell me a little yeah. bit about your story and how that, how that has sort of happened in your, in your world. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, my family was real close. My, my mom, uh, so my, my mom had two sisters. So there was my grandmother and, you know, and, and the, the three girls and, um, my, when my grandmother was, you know, you know, older, older years, I guess, um, we would say, Hey grandma, tell us, a, tell us some stories about mom. You know, we always, we were always looking for the juicy stuff, the funny stuff that my mom <laughs> did. Right. So we could give her a hard time about it. And it seemed that my, my grandmother kept telling the same story over and over. And, and we knew there were tons of stories. You know, these were two, these were, these were three crazy, crazy girls, right. Growing up, but we always heard the same story. And, you know, my mom, so the, my, my grandmother passed away and um, kind of years went on and, and, and turns out that my mother passed away when I was only 35 years old. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, so all the stories that we wanted to hear about my mom growing up and us, us growing up, they were all kind of lost. Mm-hmm. And so um, that's why I started writing because I wanted to leave stories for my kids. Right. You know, I wanted them to hear stories about themselves and the funny things that they did and, and, the crazy situations that I find myself in and the lessons that I've learned from them. So uh, when I started writing, it was, it, I, I, I write the story and then I'd write the lesson that I learned from it. Wow, wow. And that's how, and that's how I started writing because I wanted, I wanted there to be something for my kids so they wouldn't feel like I did when my mom passed away. Like, Oh my gosh, she's just gone. And, and another thing that's really funny is my mom taught kindergarten. And really? so yeah, she taught for 30 years and the stories that we talked about around the kitchen table at dinner time were wow. hysterical wow. and they're all gone, you know? So I thought, well, I'm going to, you know, I'm just going to see if I can start writing some of the experiences that I have and the lessons that I learned. And uh, probably when they get older, <laughs> probably not now, <laughs> but they'll care about it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's interesting. Um, my mother was also, she um she was in childcare. She owned daycare centers, um and so you know that's that's interesting. Like like I say, it's, it's always so interesting to see how, ah. how the similarities of of worlds um really are. So so you started writing, um, and and was it three years ago? Well, so I started. Books. Well, I started <laughs> writing. Yeah, I did write. Started this all led to children's books, which is kind of fascinating. Okay. Um, I started writing these stories and just tucking them away. I didn't write them for anybody else to read. Right. And, um, I was teaching a woman's class. It was a singles woman's class at church. And one of the stories that I had written perfectly tied to the lesson. So I thought, okay, I'm just going to bring this story and and use it as part of the lesson. Yeah. And so I I brought this story. I didn't even tell them that I wrote it. So I was kind of embarrassed, you know, (laughs) (laughs) and one of the women said, well, where did you find that? I was like, oh, no, I got to tell them where it came from. <laughs> and so I said, well, you know, this is what I've been doing. I've been writing these stories for my kids. And this one just, you know, was perfect for this lesson. And they kind of ganged up on me and said, well, we want you to bring a story every week that goes with your lesson. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> no pressure, right? <laughs> <laughs> so that's how I really started writing. I originally started writing for my kids. And then I started writing for, uh, for these, for these women and started collecting them. And then, um, one of the women said, you know, you probably ought to just start blogging. So you continue to keep writing your stories. It'll keep you motivated. Right. That's why, that's why I started blogging. Right. So, um, the story behind the books is, um, is interesting. It's kind of the same style of writing. Mm-hmm. Um, 
But what happened is something something happened with my younger daughter. Um, I, I'm allowed to tell this story. I'm, I'm telling you that I do have permission. And um, <laughs> you know how they can be. I know, and, uh, absolutely. Know <laughs> and uh, so she, uh, she invited a friend to come live with us. Um, and they were, they were in there, I would say, that I think they were about 24 when this happened. And this young lady just needed some place to live and she needed some help. And um, I kind of set the ground rules. I was living in Virginia at the time and had a big basement. Mm-hmm. And so we just ducked out this basement. It was a really cool, cool space to live in. And this young lady came in and lived with us and she brought things into my home that we're not supposed to be in my home. (laughs) And so then I was up against this dilemma, right? What do I do? And so um, my older daughter calls me and she says, you know, mom, it's time for you to address the elephant in the room. And me being outrageously sarcastic said, oh, there's not an elephant in the room. The elephant's in my basement. (laughs) Well, I knew that if I asked this young lady to leave, that I might also lose my daughter. Right. Right. And so um, I, I postponed a little bit until my daughter finished with um, school that she was in. And, and, and then I told my daughter, you know, this young lady's got to go. She's got to leave. And I, and I knew that I might lose my daughter as well. And I did lose my daughter as well. They both left. And um, it, it was awful. It was horrible. Right. And um, I was talking to a, a friend of mine and, and he said, well, why is there, why is there no fit in your basement? And I said, oh, because the food's terrific. She's hungry. The food's terrific. Meaning I was cooking for her, right? And I, so this, this conversation went back and forth. Um, no, Lori, why, why is there an elephant in your basement? Right. Oh, well, because, you know, there's a nice soft bed down there, you right. know, and I was just throwing all the sarcasm back and forth. And then um, finally he said, no, really, why is there an elephant in your basement? And I said, because I let her in. It was my because fault. Yeah. So, um, so that's how the book was. That's how the book was born. Um, the whole book is why is an elephant in my basement and all these reasons. It's a, it's a book about excuses and accountability because right. of this, because of that, because of this. And at the end of the book, I say, because I let her in. And right. um, oddly enough, you know, I did it. I didn't ever think that I was going to, it was going to go anywhere. Right. right. Um, at the time I was, uh, I was working with some high school students and sure. I brought it to them and they're like, Miss Lori, you're not going to read us a kid's book. But, but I did. And at the end of the book, I, I said, okay, guys, I mean, I've got some questions for you. You know what, what does the basement represent? And mm. Oh no. Right. And I said, the basement represents your life. Right. Oh, and they're like, Oh yeah. Yeah. And I said, what's the elephant? Oh, well, the elephant represents a problem, something in your life that's not supposed to be there. That's not supposed to be there. Yeah. So this is this is when I knew that I should be writing kids' books. About four months later, one of my students came up and she plopped down next to me and she says, Guess what, Miss Lori? I said, What, honey? She said, I got rid of an elephant from my basement this week. Oh, that's so that was cool. So <laughs> cool. That's so, so cool. So that's how the so that's how the writing started. And um you probably want to know what happened to my daughter <laughs> at the end of this. <laughs> so, so <laughs> my daughter's great, by the way. Um, so yes, the elephant did leave the basement. Um, somebody asked me once, um, did the elephant have a name? And right. I said, no, we don't name our elephants. We don't want them around long enough to name them. Right. So that was, that was kind of fun. And somebody else asked me if the elephant knew about the book. <laughs> and and the answer to that is yes she did and wow. she loved the book and she bought a book which is weird <laughs> so so it, it did have a happy ending eventually but it, it but it was uh it was really a, a the first book was really written from a place in my heart where I just kind of needed to get out the message you know yeah. it wasn't necessarily it, you know I was doing everything I could do to help these girls sure. you know but some, but sometimes the best thing you can do is just be accountable. And sometimes you have to, you know, just make some bad choice or some hard choices. Some hard, some hard bad decisions. decisions. It's when, yeah. So when, when you were, um, you know, opening the book for high school students, when you say children's books, 
are the you know what what is the age group because so, high school students sort of looked at the book i know was like you're not gonna read us a baby book are you um, yeah so yeah <laughs> what, yeah. what is like so your I age group like like what what kind of you know because clearly you know um the elephant in the room makes it appear as if the story is for a baby or for a younger a younger kid and which I call all babies, but anyway, <laughs> um, uh, but but then it then it turns around to be a you know a lesson for pretty much for anyone. Um, right. So so when 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 looking at a story like how do you like how do you gauge like your age group of of who the you know story is sort of contextually for? Right. Well, it's it originally was just going to be a little kid's book. I mean, that's what I, that's what I thought I wrote. Right. And so it turns out that it kind of will adjust to whoever's reading it. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of, I'm kind of like a storyteller for all ages because it's really how deep you want to go. Mm -hmm. I could take that book and I could go into a, uh, a, a you know, an elementary school and right. it would just be a cute book about an elephant that wears a tutu, right? <laughs> right. Not, you know, and all the cool things in the basement and the, you know, and, and they wouldn't really get it. But I found that um, if a lot of it depends on how I read the book and who I present it to sure. and, the, and the questions that I ask. Wow. So, um, yeah, so I don't know how, how it, it is. A, it is a children's book. The illustrations are a children's book, you know, the um, just kind of the way, it, the way it, it, it's presented and the way it's kind of the artwork is directed is definitely a children's book. Uh, but the message is, is pretty much for all ages. Right. Pretty, pretty universal on, on, the, yeah. on the messages. Yeah. That's really cool. So you have mentioned several times about um, women's um, just doing like women's group and um, yeah. you said in, in, in church. So I guess, so, you know, sort of women's ministry. Yeah. Um, the, it you know what what sort of your passion um when it comes to reaching out is it is it is your passion more so of the the young women or women in general or um like what what's what's like your passion yeah. like like when you when you think about who you're writing for um like who was this lesson for like what's yeah what's your, who, who i think you, when i'm writing yeah, sorry. I think when I'm writing my blogs, it's more for a women's audience. Sure. For sure. Like a women's ministry kind of audience. Mm -hmm. um, I think when I'm writing my kids' books, it's more for a younger group. Mm -hmm. But probably, which is, which is interesting, probably more of the high school age. And mm -hmm. I worked with, um, um, I did praise and worship for years and years and years. And um, I worked with a high school band. Mm -hmm. And um, I was terrified. I'm going to be honest with you. I was terrified to work with high schoolers. You know, <laughs> I, that, that just scared the heck out of me. Yeah. And I absolutely fell in love with them. Mm -hmm. um, once you connect, it's a deep connection. Mm -hmm. And so I think, so I think really I write these, these children's books for little kids and you can explain the lesson to them for sure. Mm -hmm. um, parents can explain excuses and accountability to a, to a, a small child, easy. Yeah. Um, but with the high schoolers and adults, I get, I get to kind of give them an idea of, of where the message is coming from. So yeah. I would say my blogs are written for women, women's experiences, guys read them. Some of them are really sarcastic. Some of them are funny. Some of them are deep, <laughs> depends on my mood. Right. Um, but a lesson learned is a lesson learned. Right. You know, but the, but the books are, I would say I, I would sell them. I mostly sell them to grandparents is actually who buys the most of them. I, I totally, <laughs> <laughs> interesting. I've, um, as a, I, I did Christian hip hop for so many years, probably, you know, for a, ah. a, a long time. And I always found that, you know, I would, I would be grouped with youth groups. Yeah. Right. And then, and a couple of times I was able to do conferences like, you know, pastors conference. And and I remember once <laughs> once, sit, you know, doing, you know, I'm, I'm like a 
you know, I'm a hip hop artist. I'm a rapper. I like to get hype. And they sit me in a room in a <laughs> hotel with a lot of tables. Um, it, you know, it was probably 30 tables in the room. And everyone here is like over 60. No. And, <laughs> and I remember I was probably maybe 25 or 26. And I'm like, everyone's here is over 60. Yeah. And, you know, it's like, and they're like, here you go. Go get them. And I'm like, wow. Yeah, and, not you know, the same energy, right? Well, yeah, no, not at all. And so yeah. the, the the crazy thing is, I was just like, well, I, I do what I do and it doesn't matter who's watching because, you know, I'll do what I do. Yeah. And interestingly enough, what you find is that all of these people are like, hey, I'm, I'm I need to go. I'm going back to Alaska to my youth group. And so here it just I need 25 to take it back to my youth group. I need, you know, and, and so yeah. it was, you know, which was very interesting to me because here I am the most awkward thing in the room, <laughs> feeling like the yeah. most out yeah. of place, you know, person in the room. But what you realize is that, you know, people are, are hungry to take something for the younger mm-hmm. people and, you know, yeah. and, you know, and, and be able to, to share something, you know, Hey, I got something to share with you. You know, this is what I, you know, experienced while I was in DC and it was like, you know, yeah. what, which was, it's just super cool. So I totally understand that. Like grandparents. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Being, yeah. Well, and it's just, you know, it gives, it gives, um, it gives grandparents and parents, um, kind of a talking point, right? Mm-hmm. It's, yeah. it, you know, okay, so like my first book is about excuses accountability. That's Elf in the Room. My second book is, um, it's about dishonesty. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's it's about this little pig and, you know, he's, he tells a lot of little white, little white lies mm-hmm. is what it's, it's called, little white flies. And, and so it just gives it kind of a talking, a talking point for right. people. The last book um, that I wrote the, the, that came out last year is called I'm Beautiful Too. Mm-hmm. And it's a book about self-image and and realizing that everybody is beautiful. We're all made beautiful. It's about a white peacock who doesn't think he's beautiful because he has no color. So he wishes that he has color, you know, and then he gets color from all these other animals and he ends up being a hot mess because he's right. just, you know, which isn't that kind of what we do. We right. kind of gather, Absolutely. we gather stuff from all around us and we put it into our lives and pretty soon we've kind of lost ourselves a little bit. Right. And, and so at the end, you know, he realizes that he's just beautiful because he is him, you right. know? And so, but that one, that, that's my pandemic book. <laughs> so <laughs> it, 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 uh, it hasn't gone out there yet. <laughs> right. So, but yeah, right. I mean, and, and that's kind of, so yeah, I, I would say, yeah, you can, you can give these messages to little kids. All, they're for all different ages. But, but quite frankly, I'm super excited to just maybe go into a, a women's conference, right. you know, and present one of these ideas because I right. think everybody can get something from it. It just right. depends on what level you're at. Yeah, yeah. Just it's you know the the message you know just depending on how you understand the context, the message is yeah. you know the message can can go whatever age you are. Um. So on, do you? How do you? when when you publish you know like how do how do people is your are, is your books like self publish are your books self publish or or do you yeah. um you know do you go through a publisher how does that work yeah well again you know the elephant in the room was never meant to go anywhere but just for me right. so i did self publish it um i did something really fun all three of my books are self published i did something really fun um, I, I went out and found an artist cause I can't, I can't draw stick figures. Right? I, <laughs> my, my artistic, uh, gifts are definitely not in that of drawing. And, um, <laughs> and so I found an artist that had never, that wanted to do a children's book, but had never done one. Mm. And so, so my illustrator for the first two books, her name is Sunny. And, um, Turns out that she she was a graphic artist, which I didn't know, but she'd never done a, a children's book. So um, it was really fun to be able to promote her. Now now she's she's doing really well as an illustrator because she got experience and she had it for her portfolio and, and that kind of stuff. And so uh, my last book was illustrated by Katie Skinner. Um, she had just graduated from BCU mm-hmm. in um, in Virginia as an art student. And so she did the last one and kind of the same thing, you know, she'd never done one. And 
So because I'm a business person, I could walk her through all the business side of it. Right. And um, she did a fantastic job, amazingly gifted artist, amazing. And so that's, so that's why, that's, that's kind of why I did it self-publishing. I kind of got to choose the illustrations and the illustrators and um, I got to do something that would make a difference for them in their careers. And I love doing that. So I, you know, I, who knows what will happen with the next one. I just, right. you know, for me, it's just kind of like a big fat ride. <laughs> <You know? laughs> if like someone else publishing a book, wanting to do a book, do, do do you recommend that person looking for a publisher to publish it? Or are you more of a, like, I, I would tell you, everyone go for self-publishing is grand. Yeah. Self-publishing is hard. Um, yeah. But getting a publisher is hard too. Yeah. Um, I think if you're trying to go find a publisher, uh, you send a lot of requests and get a lot of refusals. Sure. So, um, you know, there's, there's three different ways you can do it. You can, do, you can do, go that route. You can do a hybrid route where you hire somebody and they do, um, actually there's four ways to do it. Um, you can go through uh, a mainstream publisher, which means query letters, a lot of contacts, a lot of, a lot of denials, and it takes a very long time, but you can do that. Um, they usually only pick up people that have a platform or, um, are well known or have a you know are because they they've still got to market you. Right. right. Um, the second one is to go through a hybrid publisher, which is kind of somebody that will that you hire to do everything. You write the book and you hire them to do everything else. Okay. So they'll get a they'll get a they'll, they'll do the illustrations. They'll they'll get all of that stuff. They'll they'll wrap up in a beautiful nice bow and say, here's your book. Um. The third way is you can just get a consultant, mm -hmm. you know, hire somebody to do a consultant, which is kind of the direction that I'm going um, in because I have three books now, I'm going to start doing the consulting work. Um, I would have loved to have had someone to be a consultant. <laughs> no. I'm telling you that right now. Um, <laughs> Cause you get because, to make every mistake for everybody. <laughs> that, oh, that, that you get to yeah. <laughs> there were so many mistakes and there was oh, so Lord, much time involved yes. in, in researching doing it yourself. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, now I can do it very quickly because I know what to do. But right. it, I think it probably took me over a year of just digging and searching and asking questions and editors and all of that stuff. Yeah. So, um, but then the rewards of self-publishing is I got, you know, the, the I joke about the second book with the pigs that with mm -hmm. little, it's called little, little white flies with pigs. And there were, there were six main characters so I had six pigs running around my head for months. I could not wait to get them out of my head. So, um, yeah, I, it, it's it's rewarding. You you kind of it all kind of comes to life in your head. So doing it yourself right. is fun, but it's um, it's a lot of work. Yeah, <laughs> it's a lot of work, and you don't know what you don't know. Right. Yes. Yes. So. <laughs> I always <laughs> tell people that I always tell people that I, I talk to a lot of people about doing music and how to, you know, how to get it yeah. distributed and how to get in the stores. And I'm, yes. I'm, I'm so anti recording labels. And so that's why I asked you, like, yeah. are you, are you pro publishers or anti, you know? Yeah. Um, I just haven't really had much, um, you know, I like the writing part. I like the yeah. illustrating part. I like the creating part. Right. And, um, and I don't even mind getting it off print and all that. I think that's fascinating. The marketing part is the most difficult, I think. Yeah, it always is. I think marketing yeah. is the most dif difficult for any like any business. Period. Yeah, like, <laughs> I think so. <laughs> there's always like this. This is difficult for this business. It's it's, it's difficult for all you know. Pretty much any you know any business is always like yeah. the marketing is always like the headache. I'm the most expensive part, even mm. when, you know, because publishing is expensive, um, you know, to get your books printed and all that. Printing is expensive, yeah. but marketing will always be <laughs> cost, yeah. cost yeah. more and definitely more time. Um, where do you see 
Um, so you already mentioned consulting, um, but where uh-huh. do you see like your yourself going as far as you know when it as it pertains to like your your own business and 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 yeah. how you uh, obviously I would I would imagine more books coming. Um, huh? but, <laughs> but where do you I've see got the yourself? next one written? <laughs> <laughs> I bet. Where do you like? Where do you see your? Where do you see yourself like? You know, ultimately taking taking your your career this in. Yeah, I think as an author, uh, you have to have multi avenues, right? You have to have multiple, multiple avenues. Um, I don't think that I could make a living on just uh, selling books. So, you know, but I, um, I think where I would like to go with it is one, the consulting business, consulting new authors, um, helping them, helping them get there. There is nothing. There is absolutely no better feeling than having that first book land in your land in your hand. And I don't. And I mean, first book of whatever. All three of my books. The first one that was printed. I'm like, oh my gosh, I did it. You know, there's just, there's just nothing. It's just very cool. Um, so I would love to help people. More people have that feeling of, of accomplishment. There's a lot of different areas that I could work in as far as um, as far as writing, um, but as far as making a career out of it, I think consulting new authors would be one way. I think uh, um, maybe being a pre keynote present uh, like for presentations or presenters mm-hmm. would be another way. Um, it would be really fun to be able to you know at a women's conference let's say, and they have a keynote speaker and they're, they're, you know, they're talking about, you know, core values or something to be able to just present the book like I did to a high school student and just kind of open it up with something light because it's a light. The books are a light feel with that heavy message. Mm -hmm. And um, so I could see speaking would probably be a good avenue as well to go down. Um, But I think between the, the, the speaking and the, you know, helping helping authors and helping new illustrators, I think that's probably the direction that I'm going to go in. Yeah, that's awesome. Actually, <laughs> that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, a question that I ask everyone that comes uh-huh. on the Elevation Podcast um, is 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 one everyone asked me they wish I would have know I would have asked them ahead of time and I always say Uh-oh. if I ask you ahead of time then that's that's no fun <laughs> to see what the first thing that oh, no. in your mind is <laughs> what is if you could pick one life lesson to um you know let's pretend like we have a you know 100 million viewer audience and we need a life lesson from you. And you've got a shot to give everyone a life lesson um, that you would want to teach, uh, you know, in general. What would that be? Oh, boy. Um, someone told me once I was working. I told you that I was, I was in the corporate world for a long time. And someone sent me an email once that said, Lori, you need to find a kinder, gentler job. Mm. And that piece of advice, advice has stuck with me all these years. I wish I would have done it sooner. I wish I would have uh, chased something that made more of a difference sooner than I did. I think that would be the biggest lesson. Um, I'm super happy where I'm at. Uh, you know, it's very, very different than being in the hardcore corporate world for sure. Um, but it's, it's so much more rewarding. Mm. So I, I think, I think that would be my, my advice is don't wait too long. Mm. Okay. I'm gonna hit you with another one. I don't ask. Oh gosh. This. I thought there was only one. That, that's the one I ask everyone. This is the one I don't <laughs> ask everyone. I ask. All right. People. All right. Because you're an author. So, you know, the question is a little bit different. If there was, <laughs> I just made that up. <laughs> um, if there was one thing about the world that you could, that, you know, you know, God gave you a, a power in your finger to say you could change this one thing about the world, um, what would that thing be? Kindness. 
I think I would, do, in one word, kindness. I think if I could, if I could push a button and change people's perspective of how they treat one another, mm. and they could understand what kindness is, I think that's what I would change. Mm. That's a that's a good one. <laughs> 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 that's good. Like you always get different answers. Like I, I, yeah. I ask, I always throw questions out to you know just throw them out. Yeah. You know. Um, where can people find, where can people purchase, um, uh, your book or, or find out more information? I'm going to have your, um, I'm going to put your, your, uh, your website up, but mm -hmm. is, is that the place that people will purchase your book or uh, is it, you know, available yeah. just on Amazon or anything? It is, a, it is available on Amazon as well. All mm -hmm. three books are available on Amazon mm -hmm. and it's, uh, Lori D. Grant. It's www.lauriedgrant.com is my website. Um, if somebody wants a, if somebody wants a an autograph copy, they can you can buy it through my website if you like, or you can obviously get them through Amazon. Mm. Are you? Do you have? Um, are any of your books like um, on like Audible or or do you have any like? No, you know, not just... not yet. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't gotten to the point of audio books yet. <laughs> That's why I need a consultant. <laughs> <laughs> I was listening to my daughter this morning, um, listen to an audio book. That's the, actually the only reason <laughs> I asked. I didn't yeah. know because I thought to myself, because I listen to audio books a lot because I'm always on the, on the go. Um, yeah. So for, for me, I'm, I'm always listening to audio books, but I heard her listening to an audio book, like, you know, she's 10. And so she's listening to a kid's book and I'm like, I didn't even know they made audiobooks for kids. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I need to send you I need to send you a copy of uh I Am Beautiful too. I think every little girl, it, little boys too, it's which is interesting. The main character is actually a boy. But okay. um, but every little girl needs needs to know that they are beautiful no matter what. I, I think cool. I think it's incredibly important. That is super cool. Um listen, this is you are very uh uh definitely very inspirational i know that a lot of people that listen or watch the elevation podcast um will get a lot of value out of this i want to just say thank you so much for coming on um it's it's good to meet you because a lot of times on here i have people that i know or yeah. uh, you know or that i've i've dealt with over the years and you know you know they'll come on but um i'm really getting into you know meeting new people and and yeah. and, and, and different people who who bring something different to the audience or just to the world that i can share so i think you're amazing thank Lori. You. thank you so thank much you. for coming i appreciate it um, and I'll, I'll hopefully we'll have you back. We'll, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll talk again soon. Oh, thank you so much. It was a lot of fun. It was really thank great. You. Thank you so much. You have a great day. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. <laughs>
I'm a Christian with a hundred million dollar vision Can nobody box me and say that's a contradiction Gold driven, God just blessed me with ambition Look up when the rest he rest the definition Been through hell but the fire couldn't crisp him Shut down the mouths of anybody you dismiss them 20 years gospel rap broke all the traditions Cause from a teenager I was on the same mission So when I, he running God business He got clothing plus he got the boss with him He got a squad